In our domestic commodities market update today, we'll turn our focus to Nigeria's mining sector. While well, the sudden 48% crash in oil prices served as a wake-up call to Nigerian policymakers that diversification is an immediate and urgent requirement of the economy. However, the iron and steel industry in Nigeria has been a major growth constraint, or has seen a major growth constraint over this years. Let's talk to Dumebi Ieke, one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives uh, Company. She has more, of course, to tell us. Hello, <laughs> Dubibi. Well, we're talking about diversifying the economy, and of course, mining is uh, one area that comes to mind now. So we're looking at the financial and economic emergency that we are seeing yes. right now. Where does mining come to play here? Uh, it's important that we um, understand that, that that talking about diversification right now is not far-fetched considering um, the current um, market realities, how um, various markets have been plunging, you know, they're in the negative territory. Um, we look at the impact of the um, coronavirus on global commodities markets and how oil prices have plunged below um, our 2020 um, budget benchmark, which was $57 um, dollars per barrel. And, uh, you know, seeing this cut, it simply means that we are going short of revenue in the country. And the government is um, trying to um, boost up this um, measure, boost up this um, decline in oil prices and, you know, trying to revive the economy. And they're doing that um, basically by looking at um, sectors that are much more labor intensive and that's why we have the um, certain policies and reforms towards the agricultural sector and we're also seeing um, an improvement in the manufacturing sector. The mining sector um, experienced a, a level of growth in quarter four um, 2019 and that's why we think um, giving attention to this sector would assist um, government, government revenue. You know, an example is um, a, a basic individual going to work um, you're, you only have one stream of income. And with this stream of income being cut from you, you don't have anywhere to fall on. And that's the sensitive or tipping point that Nigeria has found herself in, um, where most of our revenue, was over 70% of our revenue is coming from, from just one source mm. of um, of export, just one source of export. And this has definitely put us in a very sensitive and very trivial position that any decline or any volatility in the oil market, we really feel the effect. And a, um, a further effect or a, a drop down of this would, would find that um, simple and very sensitive um, proxies like the FAC allocation would be affected trivially. And this would definitely um, hamper or adversely Perhaps affect. Perhaps there won't be any money to share anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Would be, but it would be a really, a really minimal amount for state and local government subsidiaries. And when this happens, it drastically affects consumer disposable income because now there is low, um, there's um, less amount of money for people to spend. Mm. And economic activities or generally um, aggregate output is affected by um, by aggregate consumption. And when that is low, which is a major component of aggregate output, we would see the effect in our GDP figures. Okay, now in the fourth quarter of 2019, yes. mining, of course, was the ninth fastest growing yes. sector yes. of the 46 activities, yes. you know, in the economy. Yes. Now, do you think that iron ore and steel will benefit, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, this growth? And um, even if that happens, how sustainable will this likely be? Uh, generally, um, it's expected that when there's a growth in a particular sector, there's a trickle-down effect in the other subsectors. So um, it's expected that the growth in um, the mining sector will trickle down to the iron and steel industries. Um, regardless, we also saw that metal ore itself contributed about 10.98% to the growth in um, the mining sector for quarter four 2019. And this simply means that there is potential for the iron and steel industry in Nigeria. And we're also seeing that the Ejakuta steel complex, um, there are measures to revive this particular um, steel company. Um, the Delta Steel um, Complex, we're also seeing that there are measures to um, boost up the activities going on in this particular industry. Same with the Oshobo Mill, the Just Mill. We're hoping that um, these particular mills and this um, iron and steel industries would be encouraged or expanded more, to um, expand it so they can do more um, for the Nigerian economy. Now, Southeast Asia accounts for about 73% of yes. global 
output. But the region, of course, happens to be the epicenter of yes. this um, COVID-19 that yeah. we're talking about. Now, do you think there is an opportunity, you know, for Nigeria and the global market for iron and uh, steel. steel production? Um, we... It's a long-term thing. It's mm. a long-term thing. Um, the expectation is that um, there would be a reviving of this um, industry so that it's able to do more for the country. Um, exporting this um, particular um, commodity would be a very good one for the country because there is high demand for it. Um, although doing this now, we might not um, get so much because China is one of the biggest demanders for, for um, steel. Mm. So is the US, so are <laughs> other parts of Asia. So venturing into this now mm. is a good opportunity for Nigeria. So yes, there's an opportunity for Nigeria to venture, although um, doing this now, demand might not um, be so high considering the fact that um, the major countries that demand for this particular commodity have been um, affected um, largely by the coronavirus. If we also look at um, another factor that could um, affect Nigeria's participation in the global market would be the quality of this iron and steel. So the expectation is that if Nigeria is going to do this, the quality has to be standard. So there is evenness in competition. Nigeria can globally compete with if other... If we must do it, exactly, we have to, to do, do it, it well. well. Okay. Exactly. Another thing that we'd look at is the um, value-added chain. So the expectation is that if they're going to do this, if they're going to export this product, um, we don't just stick to the raw material itself. Let's go further down to um, integrate value added so that other machines, we can start producing that here and we're exporting them as well. Imagine seeing a printer made in Nigeria. You know, it would be really nice. And other, you know, Absolutely. cars made in Nigeria and from our own steel. Um, another thing that we also would consider is the price of the commodity. Um, if we look at what's happening currently with the Naira, we've seen the Naira just in a few days depreciate. Um, basic um, economic sense is when the Naira depreciates, when a currency depreciates, exports are cheaper. Mm. So there would be high demand for this commodity because people buying this commodity will find it at a cheaper, at a cheaper rate. So it would, be, it would be beneficial um, to the exporting of the commodity. Yeah, but unfortunately, unfortunately, we depend on import. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but hopefully the measures to, um, the existing measures to encourage exportation more mm. would be um, grounded by the time this particular industry is well on the way to um, expand. Well, let's just hope we get it right. Exactly. Thank exactly. you, Dubebi. Thank you so much. Dubebi Ieke is one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company.